What's going on, Bulls fans? We got a win to talk about today. As the trade deadline approaches, the Bulls snapped their uh, two-game losing streak with the win over the Charlotte Hornets in a good team win. We'll talk about that. Also break down who won the little challenge that I presented yesterday on, on the over-under of the, of the Bulls starters and what they would score in last night's game. We'll also talk about the upcoming trade deadline, and we go into the mailbag. All that right after this. All right, Bulls fans. So our Bulls played a really solid team game yesterday in which they basically led outside of the first few minutes of the first quarter from the start to the finish of this game. And the thing that made this game such a good thing to watch is to see the Bulls activity on defense. One of the things that I've been talking about very heavily is that how the Bulls need to play with effort and activity on the defensive end, how the offense usually can take care of itself. But if we have that defensive effort, how we're in games. And so that's what happened last night. The Bulls showed up. The bench even showed up with 19 points scored from the bench. We've had games with a full roster in which the Bulls don't, I mean, the bench doesn't score that type in, in that way. So it was good to see this team play with their heads up on defense. Yes, we had missed layups from Troy Brown Jr. and things like that. But overall, this team was very active on defense. And this is one of the things that I've been trying to draw home for a lot of people. And I know some Bulls fans are really down. We hear the crew, oh, without Caruso, without Lonzo, who's going to play? Listen, when you play with activity on defense, when you play with effort on defense, the, the thing things become so much easier. I'm not saying that the Bulls are going to be able to be the efficient defense that they were when we had everyone, but your defense then can help you stay in games when you play focused on defense. Yes, LaMelo Ball had a big game, one that we expected. Miles Bridges played very, very well as, as well. But the Bulls did enough defensively to where their offense was able to really shine and do its thing and not have to really overcome a lack of defensive effort as well from the bench. Yes, our starters played heavy minutes. It was expected with games like this. We had uh, 40 minutes from Zach Levine, 38 minutes from DeMar DeRozan, all things like that. Um, and those are things that, you know, once everyone comes back healthy, you would definitely expect them not to play that many minutes. Kobe, an, a solid game from Kobe. I was really worried on what we would get from Kobe in this game, but Kobe showed up and played very well for, from us. And his defense in, in, in certain parts were huge. And we actually have a voicemail that we've been playing about Kobe. So I'm not going to go too far into that. But Kobe with 15 points. Vooch with his 18, 15 rebounds and 8 assists. And 3 blocks from Vooch. Very good game from Vooch. This is what I've been saying. Hey, shout out to Shea also from who, who you usually see in the comments here. He said he had been guaranteeing that we're going to see a better version of Vooch in February. And it has been true so far even when we lose some games. This has been a, it was a revelation to see a game like this and have, have the Bulls play in this way. 36 points from DeMar DeRozan. We know how great he's been this season. Uh, 27 from Zach Levine. Overall, a really good effort from our Chicago Bulls team and one that I hope helps, you know, solve a little of that nasty taste that some Bulls fans have had in their mouth with the way that the Bulls have been playing lately. We're getting to the point. We're, we're almost at the All-Star break. Well, after the All-Star break, uh, one or two weeks after that, we'll start getting some of the players that we've been missing back and possibly Patrick Williams as well. Um, and so we, we're weathering the storm. And that's the key thing. The, the thing that I want to talk about, I know seeding and it feels good to be able to say your team's number one in the East. All that doesn't matter. All the all the concern, all the fear mongering. Let's just stop that. Right. When the Bulls were fully healthy, even without Patrick Williams, so it's still not fully healthy. The Bulls were a top 10 offense and defense. you got to trust that team. Stop worrying about seeding. Stop worrying. Because if we don't have health, the seeding doesn't matter. I get that people want to avoid certain certain matchups in the first round. Me personally, I don't care about any of that. I, I Because I believe that when this team is fully healthy, we can compete with anyone. I don't want to hear any comments about, oh, but we need a power forward. We need a big. Yes, we do have holes. But again, this team has shown that they can compete with anyone and they have a puncher's chance in any game that they that they play, even if we don't make an acquisition. And we've been missing Patrick Williams for so long. I do think the Bulls are going to do something with the buyout market, especially when you hear certain players being being talked about. But overall, it's good. It, this was a good win. And as a Bulls fan, it was good. The live chat was booming last night. All that stuff. It was, it was just a fun game. It was a fun game. But let me know what you guys think down below about the game. Also, I did want to announce the winner. Uh, so I presented a challenge. I had asked how many points would the Bulls bull starter combined for. And we had a bunch of people guess in the comments yesterday, but only one won. Only one. I, I thought we were going to have more than one where I was going to have to do a drawing. But Winton Mahorn, who has been in, in a part of this channel and a subscriber to the channel fairly early on, if not like one of the first subscribers that I had to this channel, 
he he guessed it correctly with 102 points from our starting lineup. So, Winton, I need you to email me, bullcentralpod at gmail.com, and I need your address and your shirt size, and I'm going to send you a Chicago Bulls Central shirt for guessing that right. Oh, also the size. Let me know the size. Um, so that's it from this game. Let me know, like I said, all your thoughts on the game down below. The trade deadline is today. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is my time zone. Uh, what happens? It's really been quiet on the front for the Chicago Bulls for the most part. We know we had the Denny Schroeder rumors, but then some things have come out and now said that the Bulls aren't really focused on that. Um, I, I do not expect the, the Bulls to make a big trade. Right. If they do make make a trade, I don't think it's going to be as substantial as some bulls. And I've been you know, I've been pretty consistent on that. Um, I just don't expect I, it just doesn't have that feeling. But like we like I've been saying, if it, if it, any front office is going to be quiet and all of a sudden make a deal is going to be AK and Eversley. So we'll see if that does happen. That quietness could just be the quiet before the storm rather than a sign or indication of nothing happening. But with that being said, I don't think the Bulls need to make a trade. I don't think they they like they do need to make an acquisition, right? You would hope to just who's on the bio market they can bring in. And I know some some people are like, well, what does that really do for us? It does a lot for us. What what the Bulls need isn't another star. They don't need that at all. That is not what this team needs. They just need somebody to do some of the dirty grunt work, rebound effectively, and be able to be able to, to guard the rim some. And keep in mind, no matter what player they bring in, especially if the Bulls are expecting Patrick Williams to come back, that player isn't going to get a, a huge outside of maybe 18 minutes a game. And that's if they take away Tony Bradley's minutes because they can play four and five. So there's not a lot of minutes when you really sit back and look at what, what the Bulls potentially have to offer. This is why veterans are more are, are more than likely to come in. When you look at like buyouts like a Derek Favors, a Paul Millsap, a Tristan Thompson, they are re really more likely because A, they uh like I said, the Bulls aren't going to have a lot of minutes to offer, not a huge amount. They'll have some solid minutes to offer whoever they come in, but it's not going to be a lot. Javante Green has shown and, and he's deserved it. He's going to still get minutes on this team. Kobe White, as much as some of you guys don't like it, and we'll talk about that after the voicemail, Kobe White is going to be on this team and he's going to get minutes because his bench scoring is going to be important for us. Um, Io's definitely Caruso's definitely getting minutes. Derrick Jones Jr. has shown and earned the right that he's still going to be getting minutes as well. So when you look at it, really anybody who comes in is really going to be taking Bradley's spot in the rotation and and, and the minutes from him there if we do bring in a four. So again, the Bulls aren't going to be making a trade for a star unless they do. And then you know it is what it is. But that's where I stand on it. Let me know what you guys think down below as things become more quiet as we get closer to the deadline. Are you expecting or are you not expecting the Bulls to make a move? Some of the other uh, conversations from around the league, will Harden be moved? That's a that's a big question. Will the Nets pull the trigger on Harden to not risk losing him in free agency? Will something like that happen? Uh, I think it's not <clears> – <throat> as much as we're seeing now nowadays is that teams do do uh, signing trades a lot more. We're seeing that used a lot more than any other point in the league. So maybe uh, the, the Nets are, are thinking, hey – we can still possibly get some assets back, even if Harden does decide to sign outright to somewhere else. I guess we'll see um, what happens with Ben Simmons. Do the Sixers are they able to to pull a trade? If not for Harden, do they do they go ahead and send Ben Simmons away to actually bring in something that's going to help their playoff run this year? A lot of questions out around the league as far as what happens. We know there's been conversation about Russell Westbrook, possibly the Lakers being interested in John Wall, things like that. A lot of other things can happen. There always seems to be at least one wild trade that no that nobody really expected on the uh, on the trade deadline, kind of coming up to the last minute. So we'll see what other teams do as they look to improve uh, their playoff chances, the championship chances, things like that. But let me know down below what crazy trade ideas, not necessarily for the Bulls, but for league wide, do you have or do you think we'll see at this trade down? Let me let me know all that down below. Let's get into the last thing for today, and that is the mailbag. And we have a voicemail from a first time caller. From Jamal. Let's go ahead and play that now. What's up, Hayes? This is your boy Jamal. I'm receiving you this voicemail because I want to spit a couple of facts for the Kobe the Kobe White haters out there and things like that. I just want to let them know that since Kobe has came back from the COVID protocol, which was his 10th game back in the league at the time, um, and things like that, he has averaged 15.3 points on 45.6% shooting from the field, 39% shooting from three. Uh, 39% shooting from <clears throat> the three-point line. And to the people, he's only scored under double digits six times during that entire stretch. And his lowest game in double digits was 13 points. So to the people who say, oh, Kobe White is uh, inconsistent, I ask you again, where are you seeing this inconsistency from? Because it's not like he, you know, where are you seeing that from? And to the people who say, oh, well, he's not an efficient shooter, go back and look at the last 10, six men of the year 
award winners. Jordan Clarkson averaged 17 points from 43% shooting from the field, 34.5% shooting from the three-point line. Montrezl Hill averaged 58% from the field, but he's a big guy taking a lot of lives. And then you have Lou Williams, who's never been an official scorer. Uh, Dre, Jamal Crawford, who's never been an official scorer. J.R. Smith, who's never been an official scorer. Eric Gordon, who's never been a highly official scorer except for three. So, you know, these are, these are guys who consider six men of the year. And their averages are on par with what Kobe White is getting us in these last stretch of games since he came back from COVID protocol. So I ask people, what do you want to give up? For Kobe White, because even if you go out to a defensive big and trade him for a defensive big, the next thing you're going to complain about is where's our scoring off the bench when guys can't buy a bucket or make a shot. Kobe has been our most consistent score off the bench. You know, I want to trade him for a guy that we might be able to pick off, pick up in the in the buy in the buyout. Just some facts I thought I'd drop for uh, uh, the Bulls fans out there who want to trade Kobe White. Hopefully, he's still on the team after the trade deadline, but we shall see what AK and Mark Kevin team want to do. Peace. All right, so Jamal has a lot to say and a lot of facts. I like that he backed up everything he said with statistical facts. Listen, the Bulls fans had it marked out for Kobe at the beginning of the season. Lazy Bulls fans looked at, at everything else, especially the signing that we made um, with with Caruso and 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 drafting Io, and automatically assumed, hey, Kobe's on his way out. And let me let me get this. Let me be straight on this. I'm not saying that I don't see that the Bulls may not move Kobe in the off season, this upcoming off season, or something like that. I think right now, when you look at the, the what at what's going on with the Bulls, they need bench scoring. I've said this very, very, and I know you guys heard this from me before. Before Kobe White did come back and get, and got going, the Bulls were 29th in the league in in bench scoring. There has never been a team to make a significant run with bench scoring ranked that low amongst other teams. So unless they have some other permutations and other deals to do on top of that, I'm sorry. Denny Schroeder is not going to replace or bring in what the Bulls need from bench scoring. It's not going to happen. So with that being said, I really Listen, Kobe is a lot better than some Bulls fans make him out to be. And he's also sometimes not as good as some of his bigger supporters make him out to be either. The truth is somewhere in the middle. The fact of the matter is, is Kobe's still developing. 21 years old, about to be 22 years old. He's played out of position for the most part of his NBA career. On top of that, he's dealt with major injuries every year that he's played or the COVID protocol year. On top of that, he's had major things. We really don't know the type. If, for people who say that Kobe White doesn't fit on this team, I, 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 I just can't support that. We don't know. We A, this team is still growing and developing as well, and so is Kobe as a player. Kobe's improved defense really makes him a, a, a player that can fit on any team. So I don't understand those things. And people who are saying Kobe's inconsistent, yes, he is a strictly shooter. When he's cold, he, the Lord knows he is cold, right? But you have to take some of that when you have a bench score, the type that Kobe, the, the fact that Kobe can get you 20 points on efficient shooting off the bench any night, especially key in a playoff run when you don't have a lot of other bench going around him, it's going to be huge for the Bulls this season and in, 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 in this in this uh, postseason. Now, once the uh, the offseason comes, you you get you lose like Derrick Jones Jr. is a free agent, I believe, at the end of this year, Troy, Troy Brown Jr., and they can do some other things to really kind of rework the bench from uh, completely. Then all right, maybe they do make a make a move and trade Kobe White. But Kobe White has been everything that he needs to be. Yes, bad games aside, com coming off the bench once that scoring got going, and you saw it in like a game like last night. Yes, he was in the starting lineup last night, but you see how important and how on a roll Kobe can get in certain times. And don't forget when the Bulls are on that nine game winning streak, there were four to five games in that streak that the Bulls do not win if it wasn't for the play of Kobe White. So that's what I where I stand on Kobe White. I know everyone doesn't agree with that, but. Hey, that's where I stand, and Jamal is right on top of everything. Thank you for sending that voicemail in, Jamal. But that's it for today's episode of Chicago Bulls Central. We're your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. Make sure you're following the podcast at Bulls Central Pod. You can also send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullscentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave us a voicemail like Jamal did or a text message, you can do so at 773-270-2799. That's it for me. For right now, because I'm definitely live streaming later today with our trade deadline special. Should be on the lookout for that. I'll also try to upload any videos if a trade does happen. Now, I am getting a tattoo today. So, if some, and this would be the time where something happens where I literally can't record a video because I'm going to get a tattoo today. So, if, if, if news drops and you don't see a video from me immediately, just know I am coming shortly thereafter once I finish my tattoo. I also am getting my Chicago Bulls tattoo in a couple of weeks as well. Can't wait to share that with you guys. But that's it for me for today. Um, like I like to end everything on, go Bulls. Love you guys. Peace. This has been a presentation of The Break Media. Media.